Thank you, Mohamed. So now I'll introduce you to Idris Barsani. Idris, can you, can you stand up? He's one of the youngest delegates that we have in here. He's only 17 years old. He comes from Kurdistan. And on his own, he has created a charity that now encompasses 32 projects in four countries and in around eight general three themes that include education, poverty, women, for example. Um, and he's, he's really behind solving education in the world and reducing poverty. So I'll leave you now with Idris. Distinguished guests, fellow delegates, I am honored to have the opportunity to address you today and I am grateful to One Young World for creating this important firm. I would like to address the topic of education on the setting in which children learn, specifically cases in which conflict, leads, uh, conflict impedes learning. As you may know, the Kurdistan region of Iraq suffered horrible atrocities under the regime of Saddam Hussein. Fortunately, in the last decade, Kurdistan has, has achieved a measure of peace, stability, and prosperity. We have had to rebuild nearly everything. This includes the entire educational structure, from school buildings to textbooks and curricula. I know many delegates at this conference live in post-conflict societies. I refer to the Balkans, parts of South Central and West Africa, and other areas. And I hope, I hope, we use the summit to discuss post-conflict development as it relates to education and opportunities for youth. Thousands of former refugees are streaming back to Kurdistan. Those families that never left see a bright future for their children at last. This is crucial because, in the final analysis, education is an investment in the future. When violence, conflict, and war are upon us, it is difficult for families to consider long-term goals. Fellow delegates, I am proud that my organization, Rwanga, focuses on modest but important educational initiatives. We are establishing nursery rooms for the children of teachers in a dozen primary schools because often teachers are hampered by the needs of their own children. We are providing environmental awareness courses to nearly 9,000 students to promote, at a young age, the importance of sustainability. We are rolling out a course for 300 young women in high school to promote women's empowerment and leadership, an important facet of any healthy society. We also fund an annual university scholarship for promising high school graduates. Our aim is to remove some of the restraints that prevent us from fulfilling our full potential. Delegates living in post-conflict settings such as Kurdistan know that education is a golden key of special importance to the children of those who have suffered so much. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe our future is bright. Although we live in a dangerous part of the world, our region is generally safe and stable. We will never, ever allow destruct destructive forces to tear down the fabric of our tolerant and vibrant society. <laughs> the fact that we focus on education and long-term progress is a testament to this reality itself. Across the border, in Syria, the, education, the situation is dire. I am enormously proud of the Kurdistan regional government and of our citizens for their generosity and goodwill in supporting more than 250,000 Syrian refugees. The Syrian conflict, seen through the eyes of a child, is tragic for two reasons. Firstly, children suffer from the li difficult living conditions and the fear of violence. Secondly, the urgency of survival makes it impossible for parents to concentrate on their children's education. This is a familiar experience for families in Kurdistan, and that is why refugees have been greeted with overwhelming support. Our charity is one of many reaching out to children in the refugee camps. Next month, we will donate to UNACR a prefabricated building to be used as a preschool. A refugee camp is not the optimal place for a school, but we must ensure that the futures of young refugees are not sacrificed because of the violence which they have been exposed to. Fellow delegates, in Kurdistan, we in Kurdistan know the enormous value of education because of our tragic history. 
While the delivery of educational services in a post-conflict environment is challenging, we know that in our hearts and minds that it is deeply rewarding. As Kurds, we must remember that our fathers, mothers, grandparents struggled valiantly to provide the opportunities that we have today. We do not move forward alone. The dreams and aspirations of previous generations are with us always. This is a profound and solemn responsibility. For societies overcoming conflict, investment in, in, investment in education is a necessity for which we must fight. It is a fight for intellectual growth and spiritual freedom. It is a human right that must be nurtured, protected, and treasured. Zorsipas, thank you very much.